Yo, what is up guys and welcome to Mr. Inferno coming back with The Walking Dead, a new frontier, the Telltale series, or of course The Walking Dead Season 3. We have the extended first look that actually came out yesterday. I'm gonna go ahead and do a breakdown for it, talk about things that I noticed in the little first look here. It was actually a really, really good first look in terms of just, you know, developing Javier more and having us just get more out of him. So. Looking forward to episode 1 and episode 2 because it is a two-part premiere with the same episode named Ties That Bind. We have Ties That Bind part 1 and part 2 are the first two episodes. So I'm going to go ahead and play the little first look. There will be an annotation on screen and a time code in the description if you guys want to go ahead and skip to the breakdown. See you guys then. David! It's David! Hey! Hey, David, I had to leave my car. It's traffic's just, it's backed up for miles. He's dead. No! Mama. Where were you? I tried. I tried. I'm so sorry. He's gone, mijo. He's gone. Mama, Uncle Hector's taking care of it. What are the plans for the funeral? David made arrangements with his father before he passed. You thirsty, baby? You want some juice? Grandpa's cup was empty. You don't have to fill his cup up anymore, baby. Grandpa is sleeping. No, Yaya. People's awake. For me too. What happened to them? Same thing that happens to everyone. All right. So, firstly, we have Javier arriving late to witness that his dad has now fallen sick and died. Okay. So, we have David here on the front porch with Javier giving him the information. Then we have, of course, Hector hugging the mother, of course, so it is a very sad time because, of course, the grandfather has just passed away, and of course, you know, she isn't very happy that Javier wasn't really there, okay, just slaps the mess out of him right when she sees him, and it turns to like a more sad moment for the family because they just lost somebody. We have, of course, David in the house, we have a little kid who was barely present in the uh, first look, but he was there, but he didn't really say anything. Same as the other girl that we'll get to, but anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next part where we have the little girl here, which is probably Javier's sister or something, a little girl who is trying to bring the grandfather a cup of, of juice or a cup of water or something because she thinks that he's still alive. Because, like, of course, this is kind of emphasizing what Telltale said on a little thing here. It says, in this first look, we meet Javier. We witnessed how the beginning of the zombie plague affected him and his family before he moved forward in time two years later. Not two years later, but like two T.O. years later. 
that's a very weird statement but anyways uh, where he encounters a familiar face that of course being Clementine but anyways go ahead and move on of course this will be like a little prequel to uh, basically what happened in Javier during the time that Clementine was you know still with Lee so this is probably what happened or of course this is what happened whenever uh, Javier first you know just got introduced to the zombie apocalypse of course his grandfather was the first zombie he had to go ahead and unfortunately meet of course moving on to what we were talking about earlier but the little girl trying to bring the father the juice she's saying oh he's not he's not dead he's still alive so pretty much she goes to bring the cup of juice to the grandfather Javier is looking like what's going on what's going on right now I don't know and then, of course, walks in, body's actually in there moving. So, obviously, that symbolized that, of course, he has turned into a walker. And what she was seeing was not her grandpa anymore. And then we have Hector trying to go and, you know, see what's going on there. Then, of course, he's met by a walker, dude. So, yeah, this is their first encounter. Of course, Hector doesn't know what's going on. He's like, what's going on? There's a bunch of angry or just a bunch of random Spanish going on, talking about how, oh, this, uh, he, he's crazy, he attacked Hector. I'm not really sure what he said, but I know it's loco. That means crazy, I think. Yeah, it does mean crazy, of course it means crazy. Okay, it doesn't matter, but anyways, he says, okay, he uh, he's crazy, he attacked Hector, I think. And that's pretty much all I can kind of gather from that. I don't know Spanish, I'm sorry. But anyways, uh, of course... Uh, the mother is trying to be like, oh, he's not crazy. He's perfectly fine. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm bit. I'm bit now. So she gets bit. <laughs> she gets bit on the on the cheek. And that's not going to be very good for Javier and everybody else in the family. Because she will now be infected. Unfortunately, man. Oh, geez. So Javier didn't lose one family member. He lost two. From what we see right now, he loses his little grandpa or... He loses his grandpa and his mother as well. So that's going to be hard on him to have lost all these family members. And that's going to be very crazy. And at the end, where, of course, he David is trying to basically just stop this dude, or just stop this walker. He's unable to. So Javier has to break the little bedpost. And he he's kind of hesitant to attack his grandpa. grandpa and it's kind of just, you know, just getting to him he's you can see that he's hesitating because he doesn't want to do it but he has to but over here we have of course um the other lady that wasn't in the first look at all and of course she's tending to the you know mother so we haven't seen her talk in the teaser but she is the woman that is on the poster the uh key art for episode one or the series in general so that is very important she's a very important character for what we can see so she isn't really saying much. Obviously, they're just keeping her a, a little secret for now. So that's pretty good. Anyways, so Javier is very hesitant to go ahead and attack his, you know, zombified grandfather. And it is very unfortunate for him to lose. He has to carry the burden of having to put down his grandpa. And then his mom gets bitten. He doesn't know what's going on. Then whenever she turns, that's going to be very hellish for him as well. So... It's going to be a very unfortunate time for Javier. They're explaining his little backstory on how his experience was. It's definitely like a very kind of different from what Clementine did. Because in of course, season 1, episode 1, Clementine was alone with her zombified, you know, babysitter. And she didn't really know the call from her parents. So Clementine pretty much just had to deal with her zombified babysitter. So that's pretty much it. Javier having to deal with his grandpa and of course his mother lose of uh, being lost from his life anyways let's go ahead and move on to the next part which is a time skip to where clementine uses the jane technique okay kicks the walker down stabs him in the eye 10 out of 10 i like that anyways yeah clementine she's looking like she is definitely learned a lot over the years or just adapted to what jane taught her and various tactics that she actually learned throughout the years, probably. And it's definitely really good. She has a knife. She has a shotgun. She has a missing finger. And she's looking badass as I don't know what, man. I am loving this little Clementine right here. But anyways, look at Javier in the picture where she stabbed the walker in the eye. You can see that he's actually having his hands together. And there seems to be handcuffs on them. So 
I wonder if Clementine just ran to Javier and was like, put your hands up, put the handcuffs on. Like, I can't even explain how badass that would be if Clementine's like, you know, I don't trust you, handcuffs, now. And that's actually pretty crazy that Clementine would actually do that, maybe. I don't know. But it seems like Javier seems to be uh, gathering his little beard there. You can see it, you know, if you look close enough. You can see that he's actually getting more of a beard there. So that's definitely something that he actually gets in the future. Then, of course, moving on, we have them looking at the road. Javier buying together with the handcuffs and Clementine behind him with a shotgun. So it's obvious that, you know, Clementine and Javier probably don't get off on the same foot at the beginning. She probably tells him to handcuff himself and <laughs> proceeds to go on their journey. That is pretty cool. That's pretty crazy, actually. I don't know what to say about that. That's, that's actually pretty cool. But anyway, Clementine being a little savage. She over here trying to call the shots. So that's definitely really cool. <laughs> Anyways. That's pretty much it for the breakdown as of right now. Man, I can't wait for December 20th when we get to play episode 1 and episode 2. Ties that bind part 1 and part 2. Looking forward to that this year in the coming weeks. Comment down below what you guys think about the little first look and my breakdown of it. And tell me any details that I might have missed in the first look as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Infernal Kun. And I will catch you guys next time on The Walking Dead.